What's up summoners? King Blair here. Whenever we talk about what units are strong in RTA, we often use top level player discussion as well as their own experiences to decide what unit is OP. But one thing we often aren't able to do is use hard statistics such as win rates to decide what characters are really, really good. And that's because we typically don't have that statistics. But that is no longer the case. We have statistics on the usage of heroes as well as their win rates. A user by the name of Gskip made a Reddit post that uses over 8,000 accounts as well as over 60,000 matches to compile all these different matches and statistics that we can use to look at what heroes are truly OP. So what we're going to be doing today is talking about the win rate of these characters and seeing how some of the units that we have said are really strong, how strong are they really when we use statistics? So I have made a tool using the data that he has provided that calculates the win rate of a lot of these heroes. So if you like the video and want to see more, make sure you like, subscribe, and join the Discord server. This did take a long time. Make sure you give mad respect to Gskip. I'm sure this probably took ages for him to compile this. So thank you so much for even giving me the opportunity to be able to do statistical analysis on these heroes. But enough about that, let's get right to the video. So as always, before we even get to the win rates and the stuff that you really want to see, we have to talk about some background stuff on what are we actually looking at, right? Because we don't just want to make claims and then you can just tell your friends. We want to have some backing to that so we can have a good discussion. So what he made, these 60,000 matches and accounts are a very good spread all the way from bronze to legend, right? So there's matches of all the different tiers, which is so good since it gives you a whole holistic view of RTA and all the different things. Uh, he does talk about all the data and you're welcome to go check it out. I checked it out and it was really, really cool to see all the hard work that he did with all the different data, all the different categories. I thought it was amazing. And he compiled a list of the things that the most pre event units, use units, and all the different stuff. What I did is I used this data and compiled it and made a win rate calculator where you can type any unit and it will give you the win rate percentage of that hero, both in champion and overall statistics. As far as the sample pool that he used, there is a very good spread from bronze to legend and it's what you would expect in a lot of statistical analysis to follow kind of a normal curve. One important thing to note is that in Challenger, there's not as many players and that makes sense because typically people are trying to just get to masters and stop playing or they're trying to go all the way to legend. So most people are not gonna be sitting in challenger, but rather gold where they are trying to get to masters or in champion where they're trying to get to legend. And this really does follow a really good distribution. So the data is really, really good. I cannot tell you guys how good that is. As like an engineer, that is really good. That is an amazing spread of information, right? And from that, we gather that, of course, as far as the most prevent unit, Arbiter Vildred is there, and units such as Ceres and Fairy Tale and Fallen Cecilia. All really strong units that we know. People know they're strong, and they pre ban them very often. As far as post ban, these are units people don't want to see. We do see Fallen Cecilia drop off a lot more, but we see units like Seaside Bologna rise a lot more because, as we know, if you don't have a counter to Seaside, you have to post ban her. So I thought that was really cool to see what units are post ban because they usually do tear apart a lot of people's drafts and of course again arbitrary village winning in all the categories series and fairy tale again being second and third since those are very annoying units that if you don't have a way to deal with you are going to lose and then of course most picked units again usage does not mean op because typically the win rate will be affected and that's what we're trying to look at here but of course arbitrary village seaside being very highly picked this one was really cool because we see that Seaside Bologna still a really highly coveted unit, even with Rowana and Last Rider Crawl being in the meta. Ceres and Fallen Cecilia, again, just being so, so powerful and getting so much representation. And it's just overall very, very strong. And then, of course, last picks. It is no wonder that Seaside is here, since she really does tear apart a team if they didn't pick Last Rider Crawl or Rowana. A seaside pick will just force them to ban her, which is why it makes sense. So, again, the data just looks amazing. But now you may be wondering, what are the win rates? And some of these may not shock you, right? So in this, we're going to be looking at the win rates of other highly used characters. So things like Fawn Cecilia. Is she winning a lot? Arbiter Vildred. We know he's being used everywhere. What's his win rate looking like? And then even units like Let's Ride a Crawl, a Tywin. We're going to look at a couple of these to kind of show you the power of the tool and kind of how our intuitions, for the most part, are pretty good right so for the most part top level players know what they're talking about and even though we didn't have the statistics the statistics back what we say so we'll be starting with arbitrary villager so now 
to the part that you're probably waiting for and welcome if you skip to the section that I bookmarked. Win rates. What are the win rates of some of these commonly used champions looking like? Before I actually type it in, let me just let you guys know, in a game like Epic 7 where players all have access to different types of units, a win rate of 50% means it's a good balanced unit. If you have a win rate of 50%, you are, by all intents and purposes, a balanced unit. You are a unit that is just doing good, right? Because it does not give you an unfair advantage. If you're a unit that has over 50% win rate, that means that if you have that unit, you have an unfair advantage over your opponent because assuming all things equal, you have one extra percentage point to beat your opponent, which again, anything higher than 50%, really, really strong. Anything lower, it just means that this unit either is harder to use or harder to master, or people don't know how to use properly, so the win rate for that unit will tank because either people overestimate them or don't know how to draft, or the unit is just a little on the underpowered side. So that's how it's going to do. As far as the breakdown we talked about here, and what we did is we looked at just the champions, since that's where usually the meta will be made for the meta units, and then also for the general using all the bronze all the way to legend, the statistics. But enough about statistics, let's just get to some playing around with this tool, starting with Arbiter Buildred. So this tool, I might make it public later on after I do a, a, a little bit more cleaning and make it a little bit better. Oh yeah, last thing that I didn't mention uh, before we actually have to talk about Virtual Vildred, I did not include whether that unit was post ban. So what this means is that the unit was post ban, it still will count towards the win or loss. The reason I did this, even though it's not completely on the unit's strength, if you draft that unit, it just gives you that opportunity to win the game, right? So I feel like this shows more of the draft pressure that the unit has as well as its power. So it's a really good way to do it. So I did not take out whether the unit was post ban. Just remember that. We can discuss that later on if you disagree or, or agree with that. So starting with Arbitrability, surprise, surprise, he is a broken unit. He has a 54% win rate in champion and that grows to 56% in all the ranks combined together. What this means is that if you pick Arbiter Vildred in your draft, you have a higher than 50% chance to beat your opponent. That means that this unit is a good unit because if you pick him, assuming all things are equal, you have a better chance to beat your opponent in a game that it should be 50-50. So Arbiter Vildred showing his muscles as a very strong unit. Now a unit that I hate and everyone always tells me Usage rate does not mean OP, but we have the statistics and I am so happy we're finally able to do this. Fallen Cecilia has one of the highest win rates overall. Slightly higher than RB by two percentage points, which is insanely good. One percentage point is a lot. That means that over the course of 100 games, you're winning more games. And if we look at millions of games, she's winning a lot more than Arbiter Vildred. Everyone always said Fallen Cecilia is a balanced unit, but now we see... As far as statistics show, she's winning a lot. She has a very commanding 57% win rate. That is just insane to me how that can be a thing with how high her rep representation is. It just shows the power of Cecilia and how much people will sleep on her and will not post ban her. As we saw, she often doesn't get post banned. So if you get her through, you have a higher percentage chance of winning. I think that's just insane insane and i am so glad to know that she is this strong and that i wasn't just going crazy then we have units last last rider crawl last rider crawl again similar to fawn cecilia his win rate does fall in the champion bracket which means players in the champion bracket know how to deal with last rider crawl a little bit better but when looking at the overall statistics he has a 57% win rate, which is, again, very commanding. This just means that he's still, again, a very, very powerful unit. And the higher you go up, the harder it is to the people know how to deal with him. Now, looking at things like Fairy Tail Tenebria. Oh. So... I don't know how to spell her name, apparently. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. There we go. So, Fairy Tale Tenebria, as much as we hate to hate on her, she's a balanced unit in terms of win rate. 51% in champion, showing that she is a little bit stronger when, when built really, really well by champion level players. But when looking at her overall, very balanced. It is mainly probably because she's a control unit, right? She, she lands the debuffs, she wins. If she doesn't, she probably loses, right? So, shockingly, 
a balanced unit in as far as statistics go, which is, that's crazy to me because I would have thought she would have a way higher win rate the higher you go up, but just overall pretty balanced. Cerise, another unit people hate to complain on. In champion, people know how to deal with Cerise. People know how to stop Cerise the higher you go up in champion. But when we start including things like bronze, silver, and gold, people have no clue how to deal with her, making her a noob stomper. No offense to y'all, the early game players, but she does have a really commanding win rate in lower uh, lower locations. Seaside Bologna, another unit that a lot of people like to hate on. In Champion, people have very powerful Seasides, which has a really good win rate. Lower down, people don't have good Seasides, and hit her counters do better if you don't have a very strong Seaside or a good team for your Seaside. So people tend to just first pick her a lot more, and you can see here, People in lower ranks will first pick her a lot, where in champion, she's always a later pick. And overall, a lot of people first pick her, which probably is one of the reasons why you can just get hard countered in lower brackets. So again, it makes a lot of sense, and it's really, really cool. Remnant Violet, right? So another, another really unit that people like to hate. Really overall stats, and again, a skill unit. The higher you go up, people know how to deal with it. it all the stuff that we've talked about in the past, all the recent things we've said, um, uh, previously that and it just this just shows that champion level players know what they're talking about because champion level players know that Rylet is a good unit right 50% but on the overall people don't know how to deal with him properly so he does a lot better so something something to look at and then let's look at some of the more units like the more normal units that we know are strong but are a little bit uh, weaker so Fakunir Clurry a unit that a lot of people hate going against Actually, a balanced unit and in champion doesn't do that well, right? That 15% really hurting her win rate. So this one was very interesting to see. She's a balanced unit by all intents and purposes. Adventurer Ross. A unit that we all know is very strong, doesn't have the best win rate because people don't know how to use him well. We do see his champion win rate does go up as people know, learn how to use him. But overall, not super oppressive. Just a strong, balanced unit. Then we can look at things like Lilius. Again, the better that she is at higher up, people know how to use her. But lower down, people have no idea how to properly use Lilius against different types of teams. Uh, units like Crawl, not 50%. So if I could go on and on and show you guys millions of units that were done in this statistic. And you guys can kind of see um, different units like this or Jewel. Like let's do um, Martial Artist Ken. Again, terrible win rate. And this shows that this unit is in need of a buff. Out of all the units we've seen, he has terrible win rate, showing that he is not a great hero. So you can see that this statistic just proves the units that are strong, the units that are balanced, and the units that are weak. And it's just, it's so nice to finally have the statistics. And I hope Smogate is able to use this to their advantage to, to decide what units to, ban, uh, to buff and things like that. Desert Jewel Bazaar, surprisingly really good win rate. People that use him tend to do really, really well with him. Again, kind of interesting that people do say he needs a buff, but he definitely is seeing success for a lot of different people. So again, I could go on and on, and we can talk and discuss how certain units could get buffed, other units couldn't get buffed, but hopefully you get a pretty good idea overall of the units that are doing really well. Again, a Tywin, as we expected, really, really powerful. But okay, as far as some conclusions to all this other stuff, I will be doing a stream later on and we can go over all of these and discuss why it is the way that it is at this current snapshot and why this information is important and why Smilegate really needs to take a look at this to balance their game properly because if they're not you looking at statistic and just listening to players, they're going to make not the best decisions, right? So I think this is probably the best thing that has happened to Epic 7. I am a huge numbers guy and I will use this tool to death in the near future to show power levels. It is still important to take player exper expertise since some pe some units just people don't know how to use. Like things like Ross. Ross has a not the huge most OP win rate but can be very commanding and top level players will tell you that. So hopefully with this tool it helps you kind of see um, some of the units. I will be making this tool public on Reddit, on my Discord and all that other stuff later in the future so you can play around with it yourself shout out again to the reddit poster who did that go like the post right now this is a huge help to the community 
and it will give a, add a lot of discussion to everything that we talk about uh, in the future. So that's all I got for you guys today, and I will see y'all next time. Peace.